In this video, I want to talk about the properties of limits and the implications of those properties. So let's begin by saying that if the limit as x goes to c of some function f of x is L, and the limit as x goes to c of some function g of x is M, well then we've got these six properties here. So property one is, is the limit as x goes to c of one function plus the limit as x goes to c of another function is it plea equal to the limit of the first function plus the limit of the second function? Second property is the limit of x goes to c of one function minus the limit of x goes to c of another function is simply the limit of the first function minus the limit of the second function. And property three, the limit of x goes to c of the first function times the second function is simply equal to the limit of the first function times the limit of the second function. Property 4, the limit of x goes to c of one function divided by another function is equal to the limit of the top function divided by the limit of the bottom function, provided that the limit of the bottom function does not equal zero, because it would be undefined then. Property 5, the limit of x goes to c of a constant times a function is equal to the constant times the limit of the function. And property 6, the limit of x goes to c of a function to a power is simply equal to the limit of the function raised to the power. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's say we want to calculate the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared plus 3x minus 2. So the first thing I remark is that this is a polynomial function. It's a function that we know has nice properties. So let's begin. I'm going to break this down using these properties of limits. So the first thing I notice is that it's a function here plus another function minus a, a constant in this case. So I'm looking at property 1. We can say that this is equal to the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared plus the limit as x goes to 2 of 3x. And then we've got a minus here, so we have to use property 2. Minus the limit as x goes to 2 of 2. Okay, so hopefully you can see how I broke this down to this using properties 1 and 2. So let's continue. I want to take the limit as x goes to 2 of a function raised to a power. So if I look at my properties here, property 6, the limit of a function raised to a power is the limit of the function raised to the power. Okay, so let's see that. So this is going to equal the limit as x goes to 2 of the function raised to the power. In other words, I calculate the limit of the function and do the power afterwards. Plus, the limit as x goes to 2 of a constant times my function. So, the limit as x goes to a number of a constant times the function equals the constant times the limit. So, what this rule is telling us is that you can take constants outside the limit operation. In other words, I can take this 3 and pull it outside. So I have plus 3 times the limit as x goes to 2 of x. So in other words, I'm going to calculate this limit first and then multiply it by 3 afterwards. And then minus the limit as x goes to 2 of just the constant 2. Okay, so now let's calculate some limits. The limit as x goes to 2 of x, well that's easy, we just simply substitute 2 in for x, so we have 2 and then the square root afterwards, plus 3 times the limit as x goes to 2 of x, again you just simply substitute 2 in for x, minus the limit of x goes to 2 of 2, well that's simply the limit of a constant, it's just the constant. And we can work this out now, 2 squared is 4, plus 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2, which simply gives us 8. Okay, so what do we do? So we started off with this polynomial function. We use the properties of limits to break it down here and here, and then we're able to reduce it, to work it out and get the limit value of 8. So I noticed through this example here that really all you need to do is, if you want to take the limits as x goes to some number of a polynomial, all you really need to do is evaluate this polynomial as whatever this number is here. So really, I can skip from here straight down to here. So let's see that. 
Then as x goes to 2 of this polynomial will be 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 2. And then you just finish it off. So this is true of any polynomial function. So what we can do is we'll try another example and uh, a slightly more difficult example and see what we get. So I'll just make a little bit of room here. Let's say we want to calculate the limit as x goes to 2 this time of, let's say, x squared plus 3 over x plus 1. So let's see what we've got. Well, on top we've got a polynomial, and on the bottom we've got a polynomial. So this is what we call a rational function. A rational function is a polynomial over a polynomial. So again, we can use the same, same uh, processes that we use in this one here to do this. The first thing you need to check though is, is that if you substitute 2 into your function that you're not going to be dividing by 0 because remember that would make it undefined. So if we substitute 2 into the bottom just very quickly we'll have 2 plus 1 which is 3. So we won't have any problems. So we now know that we can simply substitute the value 2 into the top and the value of 2 into the bottom and work it out to figure out the limit of this. So we have 2 squared plus 3 all over 2 plus 1 this equals 4 plus 3 all over 3 which equals 7 over 3. So I'm sure you'd agree this is much much quicker and much much easier than having to break your problem down which are using the properties of limits. So once you've got a problem where you're calculating the limit of a polynomial over polynomial for example, or just simply a polynomial on its own, you just need to evaluate it at whatever the value is here.